Okay, well today we're going to talk about chapter 4, 2, Patterns and Linear Functions. Okay, the objective for today is to identify and represent patterns that describe linear functions. And our standards for today are A1.2.1, which is translate among various representations of linear functions, so tables, graphs, uh, words, and equations. And then A1.5.5 which is what we did yesterday, which is sketch and interpret linear and nonlinear graphs. Okay, so, so there's some, a lot of vocab to start with. The uh, first one is dependent variable. Uh, many of you probably have heard the word dependent. Uh, you are dependent on your parents or somebody's dependent on somebody um, to help them out with something. Okay, that is a dependent variable is similar to that. Uh, it changes due to what a, another value is. Okay, typically the y variable in equations, once we start looking in equations, uh, it depends on what the x is. Um, the independent variable, which means you know, you're independent, you don't rely on anything, um, typically the x variable. Okay, so it's, we usually pick an x variable and then the y depends on what the x is. Um, the other one is input, okay, also known as the independent variable. So x is what we usually pick and we input it into the equation. Okay, so it's what you plug into the equation, and again, it's typically that x variable. The output, also known as the dependent variable, um, the answer you get out of an equation, um, once again, is typically your y variable. So it's usually what you get out, so what's your answer to an equation? Okay, so problem one, representing a geometric relationship. It says in the diagram, what is the relationship between the number of rectangles and the perimeter of the figure they form. Okay, represent this using table, words, equation, and a graph. So as we start out in this one, let's look at the table. Okay, we have this table, and basically we're gonna call rectangle X, we're gonna call that basically the width of each of these rectangles. But since this one is a, a rectangle width of one, we're gonna use X as one. We wanna know the perimeter. Okay, so we have to remember what the perimeter it is. Well, perimeter is equal to um, 2w plus 2l. Okay, so as we start to write the perimeter down, we're going to say, well, it's the width. Well, width is 1, which was our rectangles. How many rectangles do we have x? So we're going to represent that as our x. We're going to say 1 okay, plus 2l, which is our length, which it's always 6 across the board here. So we're gonna say two times six, and we wanna know what that equals. Well, two times six is 12, plus two is 14. So we write the ordered pair, which is x, y, and it becomes one, 14. So to put this in a table, we're plugging in one for one of the variables. The other one's constant across the same board. Okay, so notice that the widths will change, but the lengths, each one does stay the same. So as we go to the next one, how many rectangles do we have here? Well, we have two. So we say, well, now the width is two units because we combine those. So it's two. So notice that this number is going right here. And then we say two times six again, which is 12 plus now four. So 12 plus four is now 16. So we get two sixteen. Okay, so this is what we're getting out. We're getting 16 as the answer out of the problem. So we'll go ahead and say, all right, well, this one has three rectangles, and the last one we'll go ahead and write up is four rectangles. And then we'll do the same thing. But now we say, well, 2 times 6 is still 12, plus now 6 gives us 18. So now we have 3, 18. And then we go on and we say, all right, well, 2 times 4 plus 2 times 6 is equal to 20. So as you work that one out, you get 12 and 8, which gives you 4, 20. So there's some coordinates that we have, or some ordered pairs, answers for relationships there. If we simplify this problem right here, and we were to say, well, let's use x, since that's what we're inputting right here, I'm going to have that my y which is what I said in my perimeter, y equals 2 times whatever, and notice that this is on, always changing. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 
So it's changing. If something's changing, that's your variable. Okay, it's your variable because it's always going to change. But if you'll notice that two times six, two times six, two times six, two times six, every time it's still twelve. We we're always saying twelve plus something, twelve plus something. That's a constant. So we can go ahead and simplify that and write that as twelve. What you have just made is an equation. You've written it up as an equation, and that's a linear equation. Okay, and we'll see why that's a linear equation here in a minute. So we go on the part B of this uh, one is now that we have the table, the uh, equation, now we just write it up as a graph. So as a graph, we're just going to make some labels. I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then I'm going to say, all right, well, I started out with 14. So I'm going to use 14. And just so I counting by twos, I'm going to put this little squiggly line there. It just means I'm cutting down. That This really starts at 0, 0, and goes 2, 4, 6, 8, just so I don't have to go all the way up to 14. Okay, I go 16, 18, 20, and I'll go ahead and go to 22. So 1 produce 14, 2 produce 16, 3 produce 18. You can see this back in the table that we just made. So all I'm doing is I'm graphing these coordinates that we already found in the last table. So what you'll notice is that this makes a really nice straight line if we were to connect these. Okay, if we were to connect these, and I'll go ahead and do that. Granted that you know my line's a little off there because uh, this is hand drawn. So what we make is a line right here. You'll notice that that makes a nice line, which is what we call linear. Okay, and we call it linear because that's what it makes when we spell the word linear. It's a line. Okay, and that makes a line, which gets into our function name and our linear function. Okay, a function is a relationship that pairs each input to one and only one output. So you'll look at the last table. If you reference that last table that we just did, every um, different input x value that we had only had one y value. Okay, so you didn't say, like, if I had one rectangle, I had a perimeter of 14 and a perimeter of 20. No, you had one rectangle that made a perimeter of 14. Okay, that was it. So that's a function. A linear function is one that when you graph these out, they make a nice line. So they're straight lines, okay, not curved. Okay, if there's any type of curve to it, then it wouldn't be linear. So you have to make sure you do any type of graphs on graph paper, because otherwise your hand-drawn ones, you're not going to see it quite right. Okay, so example two, analyzing graph. I want you to go ahead in this one, I want you to take this data, I want you to put it on a piece of graph paper, um, if you don't have graph paper, use a ruler and use uh, like every inch is a one unit, two units. And then I want you to represent this onto a graph. So I want you to make uh, x, y coordinates, and I want you to plot them. And then I want you to tell me, is that a linear function? And if it is a linear function, I want you to tell me, what is that equation? Let's see if you can come up with that equation. Um, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow in class, and we'll finish that one up. Um, but I want you to go ahead and investigate what you would get with that one. Um, at least have the graph, okay? At least you should have the graph, and then have some sort of y equals, and see if you can figure out what the pattern is from each of these coordinates, one to the next. Um, what's the, the difference? What's the increase? What's the decrease? Okay, so I have another assignment for you on Edmodo. It's just a short little quick quiz that I want you to take. Uh, so be looking for the 4-2 uh, quick quiz on Edmodo. Okay, so we'll go ahead and stop there and we'll investigate more together in class.